there's a lot of myths out there about Disneyland. Oh boy, I've heard some humdingers. That's why I want to take a few moments and bust some of these myths with you. And who knows, we might learn a thing or two while we're at it. So let's get started. Myth number 10, you should only go to Disneyland when it's the least crowded. Now, don't get me wrong, I hate hanging out in big crowds of people just as much as the next guy, and I do my best to avoid long lines and crowds at Disneyland as much as I can when I'm there, but there are some benefits with going to Disneyland during the busier times. For one, you get a fully open park with longer operational hours. At the busy times of the year, you'll have less ride closures for refurbishment. All the food kiosks and eateries will be up and going. You'll also get more entertainment options going on like parades and fireworks every night. I mean, one of the reasons why a lot of these busier times of the year are so busy is because there's big fun events going on that are very popular and great to see. Holidays and holi holiday decorations. Long story short, having the park as empty as possible shouldn't be the only thing you consider when you're planning your trip to Disneyland. Myth number nine, Disneyland has the same hours all year. Many people will find themselves confused when they realize Disneyland and Disney California Adventure can have different operational hours from day to day. For the most part, both parks will open at 8 a.m. most days, but Disneyland will close anytime between 10 p.m. and midnight, and DCA will usually close at either 9 p.m. or 10 p.m and usually closes an hour or two before Disneyland proper. But you also have to look out for the after dark events that happen throughout the year, these separate ticket events that can close the park down between 6 and 8 p.m. depending on the event. So make sure you're staying up to date on any after dark events that might be going on to avoid getting kicked out of the park before you're ready to leave. And always check those park hours before you plan your day. Myth number eight, there's a dead season. In fact, not only is there no longer a dead season, there's not even a slow month anymore. I know back in the day, it used to be by the book, Mondays and Tuesdays are slow, winter time is the dead season, and September is slow. This really is not the case anymore. Between all the events going on, the popularity of magic key passes, and people just having more flexible work setups these days, not to mention the reservation system can kind of make things really screwy and wonky that way. Anyway, between all of that, Disneyland Resort sees very little pockets of not crowded days sprinkle throughout the year and sometimes they'll have slower weeks, but you'll never see a dead season anymore. With that in mind, myth number seven comes into play. You'll be stuck in a sea of people all day. Yes, we've seen the terrifying pictures of the massive crowds of people at Disneyland. I know I have plenty myself, but the truth is, unless you're at the parks during a really, really busy time, like the week after Christmas or during fall break, it's not like that everywhere all day when you go to the parks. There will be times when the crowds will congregate for parades, fireworks, or big shows, but they look scarier than they really are and can be avoided altogether if you don't want to participate in that event. There's hardly ever a time where every land and every park is really busy. There's kind of a way that the crowds flow and move through the park, so if you're mindful of that and smart, you can beat the crowds throughout the day with some, you know, ahead of time planning. In fact, I probably should make a video about that. Myth number six, you'll be stuck in lines all day. Again, this doesn't have to be the case. Here's the thing, avoiding crowds and long lines for anything is always my top priority in planning vacations and especially Disneyland ones. And what I've discovered is this, people love to sleep and they tend to try to avoid extra effort. So with that in mind, here are my three big tips that never fail me 
and you only need to do one of these things, but if you combine a couple, you'll find yourself beating the crowds and avoiding long lines every single time. The first thing is you need to be willing to wake up early. No matter how busy the park is going to be, the lines will always be super short first two hours of the day, always. The second thing is you have to be willing to stay late after 8.30 p.m. is another time when lines start getting short as people collect in the show areas and start heading back to go to bed. If you're willing to burn the midnight oil, you can get some serious rides in at night when the waits are short. Number three is be willing to be a little uncomfortable. If you're willing to kick it in the rain or you don't mind when it's extra hot or extra cold, or if you don't even mind walking a little extra than everybody else, you can be rewarded with a less crowded park and shorter lines for sure. You just need to be willing to tough it out a little bit longer than everybody else. Myth number five, it's always sunny at Disneyland. Yes, generally Southern California can be pretty sunny place and have moderate weather, but that doesn't mean it's tank top and shorts weather year round. Okay, if you're going June through like early September, you can plan on being warm to very hot almost every day, but that's only three to four months out of the year. The rest of the year can be very different even in the span of one day. And when you're spending most of your day outside, you want to be prepared so your day at Disney isn't ruined by a poor outfit choice. Here's the breakdown. Mid-December through early March can be chilly to full-on cold all day, especially if it's overcast. This is also when you get the most rain in Anaheim as well. So the name of the game during this time is Layers because you can go from light sweater in the morning to t-shirt in the afternoon to full-on warm jacket and a hat at night and then always bring a poncho or a rain jacket during this time. Now mid-March through May, plan on it being chilly in the morning and night but warm and pleasant in the day with rain sneaking in a little bit here and there especially in March but it's really a pleasant time during this time. Of course, like I said earlier, the summertime is going to be warm to very hot. And then plan on mid-September through early December being very similar to the springtime with chilly mornings and nights, but pretty pleasant during the days with rain sneaking in again. And remember to bring something to protect your strollers so your kids aren't sitting in the wet stroller after it sat parked in the rain while you went on rides. Okay, I'm just going to leave it at that. Number four, the Disney property hotels are the closest hotels. While the Grand Californian is indeed the closest hotel since it sits inside the parks, it also is the most expensive by far. The next closest hotels are going to be the ones that are on Harbor Boulevard across the street from Main Street entrance, like the Best Western Park Plus Place Inn Mini Suites, woo! Best Western Plus Anaheim Inn, and the Tropicana. In fact, all the hotels in that area are extremely walkable to the parks. Of course, if staying at the Disney hotels is your jam and you don't mind spending the extra money, then go for it for sure. But you don't have to to be conveniently close to the parks. Myth number three, Disneyland never changes. In fact, it was Walt Disney who said, Disneyland will never be completed. It will continue to grow as long as there is imagination left in the world. Of course, Main Street and the entrance haven't changed too much over the years, so you get those familiar feelings and nostalgic vibes as you enter the park, but besides that, there's been all kinds of changes throughout the parks throughout the years, both at Disneyland and Disney's California Adventure. Number two, you have to buy food in the parks. Now, eating at Disneyland is one of my favorite things to do, 
Food is always a big part of my vacation planning, but the cost of food at Disneyland can really add up. That's why it's important to know that you can indeed bring your own food into the park to help save money. There's just a few rules you need to know and be aware of. You can't have coolers larger than 19 inches by 24 inches by 31 inches. This means you won't be able to really wheel in a big cooler or anything like that, but you can do a little carry on one. You also can't have dry ice or loose ice in your cooler, so if your food needs to stay cool, you're going to need to use one of those blue cool pads or cool packs. They also have lockers that you can rent right outside the park so that you can put your food in there and you don't have to carry it around all day. Also make sure you don't have any glass bottles on you as well. Those are not allowed. I've seen some really fun and creative ways people have figured out how to keep their family full with snacks and packable meals. I suggest using reusable Ziploc bags and segmented containers and bulk food to save on cost and waste. I'll go ahead and leave some links to these products that I'm showing you right now. If you're interested, I'll put it in the description box. And finally, the number one myth I hear being said way too many times is Disneyland is only for kids. Of course Disneyland with kids is fun and magical, but it can be just as fun and magical for adults too. Let's be honest, we can all benefit from a day at a place dedicated to imagination, whimsy, nostalgia, and fun. Whether you want to run from ride to ride, plan some lovely dining experiences, sit and watch some entertainment, double fist an ice cream treat or two, get a much needed hug or a pound from a beloved character, or just find a space that helps you forget about life for just a moment or two. Because life is just too serious sometimes and we can all use a moment to breathe. And life is much too short not to let yourself get lost in Disneyland just for a moment or two, don't you think? And if you want to make your next trip the best trip yet, you may want to check out some more of my content like this video on the right. Thanks for watching and take care for now.